Good morning, everyone. Welcome to LAMS Risk Control Department's Industrial Code Rule 60 Workplace Safety and Loss Prevention Incentive Program information session that is going to be hosted by New York State's Department of Labor. My name is Jamie Endress. I am a senior risk consultant with LAM. A little bit of brief information um, about today's presentation, some housekeeping information. Everyone is going to be muted. If you have any questions, feel free to use the question and answer option. Chats are going to be muted as well until the end of the presentation. We're providing this presentation today to help our clients be as successful as possible and find ways to save additional funds on your workers' compensation premiums, on your New York State workers' compensation premiums. Over the past three years or so, LAM has saved about approximately $2.7 million for our clients by helping them through Code Rule 60 and applying and maintaining the guidelines that are needed to qualify for multiple different discounts. You're able to save up to 10% for the first year of the program and an additional 6% for the second and third years of the program as long as you maintain the qualification. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to help you do that. We're here to guide you through it. We're here to make sure that you're being as successful as possible from a safety perspective. At the end of this, we're gonna ask you to look at your mods. We're happy to talk with you about what your current mod is and create a plan, an action plan moving forward to ensure that you're ready to participate in this program. Our guest from the Department of Labor will explain what the program is, what the qualifications are, and then at the end, we're gonna open it up for questions and answers. At this point, I'd like to introduce Scott Payone of LAM Insurance Services. Thank you, Jamie, and welcome everyone to today's presentation on Code Rule 60, New York State Department of Labor's Safety and Loss Prevention Program. My name is Scott Pannone. I'm a Senior Risk Control Manager here at LAM Insurance, and I've been certified in the Code Rule programs for the past 10 years. As Jamie indicated, Code Rule 60 provides significant monetary savings to your workers' comp, New York workers' comp uh, insurance premiums um, for quali qualifying employers. And we're excited to be joined today by Megan Boschman, Senior Safety and Health Inspector and Program Administrator for the uh, Department of Labor and the Code Rule program. Uh, she will be providing today a detailed overview on many of the details regarding uh, the program requirements and so on. So Megan, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, without further ado, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, first of all, thank you all so much for having me. We are really looking to expand our program over the next few years and hopefully, um, you know, bring these savings to more employers across New York State. So um, we would love to have you apply if you meet the qualifications. And, um, you know, on top of LAM being here to help you through the process, we are also here at the Department of Labor to help you uh, with any questions that you have. So I'm just going to get started. I'm going to, um, we have a presentation today that is going to go through what the program is, um, how to apply, what the qualifications are, and um, all of that information for you so that you know what you're getting into when you get into this program. So the um, Code Rule 60 program, it's got a very long name, the um, Industrial Code Rule 60 Workplace Safety and Loss Prevention Incentive Program. We just call it Code Rule 60. It's much easier to remember that way. Um, it is a discount program. It encourages employers in the state to implement safety programs that will decrease your workplace injuries. Um, and it will also reduce your workers' compensation costs. This is, um, you know, when you are reducing your workplace injuries, you're making it a safer place for your employees to work. Um, you will reduce your workers' compensation costs. And then on top of that, you'll you could receive these discounts to your policy, which would reduce them even further. Um, Employers can apply if they implement any of the following programs. We have a safety program, a drug and alcohol prevention program, and a return to work program. A lot of employers already do 
um, these programs and they just don't have them formalized or they might not meet all of our um, program elements. So that's where LAM can help you get that together and um, you know work on that and, and formalize it so that you can get these discounts. So anyone in the state who is insured in private insurance, so no self-insured employers are allowed to apply, um, but if you're insured through private insurance, um, except if you're in a safety group with the state insurance fund, you are eligible to apply as long as you pay annual New York premiums of at least $5,000. Um, and then you have to maintain an experience rating under 1.3, and that goes for the year before you apply, and then it has to continue for every year that you're approved. So, um, and this is again, only New York data. We don't take into account any kind of interstate ratings. Um, as of October, 2022, New York State no longer per, um, participates with the interstate rating system. So um, all of the ratings that we are going to see in New York State are New York State data only. Um, you are also, if you have to comply with the Code Rule 59 program, which is the mandatory safety and loss prevention program, um, you will get a notification for that and you will have to complete that process before we can accept your application. And then you have to implement any one or more of the programs. Um, as Jamie was saying, you can get up to 10% off of your um, premium in the first year and up to 6% off in all of the following years. After three years, you can go through the renewal process which is not as um, involved as the initial application. So, um, you know, that's the biggest time investment is the initial application. Um, after that, you are eligible again for up to 6% in each of the following credit years. Um, you can continue in this program as long as you continue to meet the qualifications. We have some employers who are in their, um, I think we're going into their 13th or 14th year in this program and they have saved a lot of money. Their experience rating has gone down a lot. Um, they are a pretty safe workplace. They don't have a ton of accidents. Um, so, you know, it's it's a really great program to help you reduce your costs and keep your employees safe. We have um, an extensive application process, but it is not as intimidating as it seems. Um, you must first implement one or more of the three programs. Uh, you can do that on your own. You could adapt a model program. We have model programs available on our website. Um, I think LAM might have some model programs. Um, they can help you to implement any programs or you can employ a um, private specialist to help. Um, <clears throat> what you need to do is demonstrate you're going above and beyond the minimum the minimum OSHA requirements to provide your employees with a safe environment to work in. So um, we are looking on top of, you know, if you need a lockout, tagout program, bloodborne pathogens, things like that, we're also looking for employee involvement and, um, you know, extra training, um, employees being able to report hazards without fear of reprisal. There are um, a number of program elements that you would have to meet um, on top of just having your OSHA required programs and New York State required programs. And then once you have the programs in place, you would have an evaluation with a certified specialist. Um, we have a list on our website, and I know that LAM has um, several folks who are um, approved to perform all three of the, um, the program reviews. So the um, the safety, the return to work, and the drug and alcohol prevention program. They each have their own certification for the consultants. Um, but you know, you I, I believe LAMS have all three of the qualifications. The specialist then issues an evaluation report for each program. So if you're applying for all three programs, you will get three separate evaluation reports. If they make any recommendations, you must show that you've completed those before you apply. So um, when you get that report back, look and see if there's any recommendations, um, complete those and send that evidence in with your application form. Um, you will submit a copy of the evaluation report 
along with the application form, which is available on our website. And then you'd also include copies of all of your program documents. So we want to see your safety programs. We want to see all of your, um, you know, if you have OSHA programs like bloodborne pathogens or lockout tagout or respiratory protection, we want to see those programs as well. Um, you have to demonstrate that you meet all of our program elements and it needs to be in your written programs. Um, and so we review everything on our end and that can take, right now it's taking um, 30 to 60 days. So it can take a little bit, but if we come back to you, we need any additional information, we'll give you about 30 days to send that in. Um, and then we will move forward from there. <clears throat> Once we receive all of the documentation, so once we have all of your evidence that you meet the program requirements, we will schedule a remote verification meeting. This is usually done by Teams or WebEx or however um, you know the employer is able to do it. We can also do it by phone. Um, I may ask if they're not able to meet um, by teams or something like that, I might ask for um, a list of employee phone numbers and get permission to speak with them um, and then ask questions just about the programs. We want to gauge employee familiarity um, and buy-in with the programs to make sure that it's not just a paper program that the employer has actually put in the work and the employees are aware. Um, so it's, you know, it's not really, it's not a quiz. It's just show us that you've put in the work. Uh, if we can't get enough information, we may go on site. We do have that ability. We, um, it's part of the regulation. So we may come in and do um, a physical inspection. We may come in and talk to your employees. Um, or we may just not um, move forward with the application if we can't get the right information or, or it's clear that the, that the programs are not actually active. Um, and then if we get to this stage, it doesn't guarantee approval because sometimes in the past, um, not with LAM clients because they're really good at getting all the documentation needed, but we have had employers who have applied and um, their employees couldn't answer any questions about the programs. They didn't know what the programs were. And, um, you know, it's clear that they have the written programs, but they haven't actually implemented them with their employees. So. That's what we want to see. We want to see that you are actively using these programs. <clears throat> After this meeting, I will complete a final review report. Um, I will, you know, document the, the information that you've sent in. I will document our conversation, um, any specific notes that will be relevant, and I send that up to our um, program manager for approval for, you know, final determination. If we uh, get all the evidence that all of the program elements are met, you'll be approved. Um, it's pretty simple. It just takes a lot of time for us to get through it. So um, if there are any kind of deficiencies or hazards, if we come on site and we not notice safety hazards and they're not fixed by the time we leave, um, you know, we'll make a recommendations letter telling you what needs to happen, um, what documentation we need, anything like that, and we will send that to you. Um, we never deny an application. We don't want you to take a recommendations letter as a denial because we really want you to fix those things and come back and continue the process and get approved. Um, we would really, we we would really love to have more employers in this program. So um, you know, we are always happy to work with employers if there are any deficiencies or hazards or anything like that 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 we don't feel. Um, means that you're quite ready for the program, but we do want you to come back and complete the process. You've already put in the work. Let's finish it. Let's get you over that last hurdle. And we're always happy to help with that. Megan, if I may just add to reinforce your last bullet point, uh, that you, your team, the Department of Labor truly is a partner in the Code Rule 60 process. And in my experience, we have not yet had a uh, insured, denied um, through the application process. Department of Labor is very good about providing 
uh, feedback and information. The ultimate goal is education through the process for the goal of continuously improving safety programs so savings can be achieved. So those savings can be reinvested back into an insured safety programs. Um, so um, it, it's a really great philosophy. It's a really great opportunity to you know, further educate, further improve. And, you know, your the Department of Labor's, Labor's uh, partnership has definitely been a, appreciated in terms of, you know, assisting to provide that feedback to um, help employers uh, fully meet the eligibility criteria, criteria. Thank you, Scott. We work really hard to, um, you know, really work with these employers. We want employers to be safer for their employees. And, you know, if saving you money in the long run is going to help, we're, you know, we're really happy to do that. So feel free, any questions, any time you want to talk about the program or talk about anything, please feel free to contact us because we are always happy to help. Um, if you decide you'd like to apply, we prefer the applications are sent by email. Um, most folks send them just by zip files. You can send them in multiple emails if it's needed. Um, we do get some programs that are, you know, over 700 pages, and then they have 600 pages of documentation, so they send them over five or six emails. That's totally fine, um, but you can also mail them if it's too much. Um, you can send them to the email address that's on your screen, wslpip at labor.ny.gov. Um, I have access to that inbox, and my program aide, Kaylin, um, will also forward those to me if I miss them. So, um, you know, you will see, you will get a response pretty quickly that we've received it at least, and then we'll go through the process. Applications are due at least 120 days before your policy renews. We use most of this time um, because it does take a long time to review the programs. We, um, <clears throat> on top of this program, I also manage the Code Rule 59 program. And um, that one is massive. So we do a lot of work with that. And we also have special projects with data mining that we are looking at and you know things like that. We have to constantly come up with um, information for other folks. So we are currently managing two big programs and it's just the two of us. And up until 2022, it was just me. So um, you know, applications, they'll take about, about 30 to 60 days to get reviewed. And then we have some time to get through the whole rest of the process, um, but we definitely need the applications at least 120 days before your policy renews. Um, if we do get it late, we'll do our best to get to, to get it all squared away before the policy renews. Um, we can't guarantee at that point if if it will be approved before your policy renewal. Um, some insurance carriers will go back and rebuild the policy with the credits attached if we. Um, approve it pretty quickly after the renewal date. Um, some will not, and in that case, we will do any approvals for the following policy year. Um, and then also just a note, the regulation does require that you send a copy of your application to your insurance carrier so that they're aware that you're applying for this program. Um, we work primarily with, with you directly um, we'll also work with your specialist and, um, you know, the insurance carrier isn't really involved until the very end. Once we've approved you, um, we will send them a notification and then they apply the credits to your policy. Um, but you do need to send them at least a copy of the application when you're first starting the process. There are some forms that are required that we need to see. Um, we have the application form. These forms are all available on our website. Um, I'm happy to email them to anyone who needs them as well. Um, feel free to email that WSLPIP email address and you know we'll we'll answer any questions that you have or send you any forms that you need. Um, so we'll need the application form completed by the employer. The appendix A is completed by the employer. It's not necessary for everybody. It's only if you have more than five locations. Um, more than three employee representatives and more than five injuries in the last year. Um, and that part is for your annual reports, which we will get to a little bit later. You could also choose to submit any extra information on a separate sheet of paper instead of using the Appendix A. Some folks um, 
don't like to use the Appendix A, they would just rather send it in a Word document or a PDF or something like that. That is totally fine. Um, we will accept it um, any way you need to send it. <clears throat> the evaluation report forms for each program, they have specific numbers, but they also have the titles on them. So you'll know exactly which one is which. Um, that is completed by the specialist. And that comes to us so that we can see that it was reviewed, that the specialist, you know, is making their argument for what you have, and if there were any recommendations. And then you'll send us copies of your programs and program documents. So again, we're looking for your OSHA required programs. We want to see forms used for your site inspections, um, accident investigations. We, I will always ask for completed examples of the forms if they're not included in the initial submission. So it's always good to just send them. Um, we want to see um, your OSHA logs for the most recently completed year. And then training records, we might ask for if, you know, we're not sure about how frequently you train or, you know, we want to make sure that lockout tagout was trained on this year or, um, you know, that you've filled, that you've trained everybody who needs to use a, a power, powered industrial truck, um, you know, things like that. We might ask for those records as well. Um, <clears throat> basically, the more information you can send us to show us that your programs are working, uh, the better. It will take us less time to go back and forth and we'll be able to see very quickly that your programs are effective. So our review process, again, we get the application, we review all of the documents, um, we give you 30 days if we need additional information. If there's enough time left, so we'll give you another 30 days if it doesn't get us all of the information we need. Um, sometimes people will, sometimes employers will send us half of the information we need and we'll go back and say, hey, we still need this information. Can you send it? Um, we might not have enough time for that. So if we don't, we'll usually go to a verification meeting um, where I will ask those questions and try to gauge the response from the employees and things like that. Um, Alternately, if it's very clear that nobody knows what is going on, um, we'll send a recommendations letter. Um, I don't think I've had to do that with LAM employers. They're, they're usually pretty good about getting all the documentation we need. So um, I wouldn't worry about that. We will, we will also help walk you through the process too. That's a very rare occurrence that we don't even do the verification meeting, so. Um, the meeting is performed by a DOL inspector. That's me. Um, I'm the only one who's doing it right now. I am going to hopefully be training um, a few other inspectors from the Safety, Health, and Essential Rights Unit, which is part of the unit that we are in now. Um, so hopefully we will have some backup and other folks to help us get through that. But right now it's just me. Um, so I will ask to speak with several frontline employees. I want to talk to the employees doing the work. We want, I want to see that the employees doing the work know their safety requirements, know their responsibilities, and know how to keep themselves and their fellow employees safe. Um, that they've been trained, that they um, are, are free to share their concerns with management, um, that they're part of the safety committee, that they have an active role in the programs. Um, I will also ask to speak with the program contacts. Um, they're usually involved in the meetings. Um, safety committee meeting members will, will join in too. Um, and then if I have any other remaining questions, we'll ask those at the, um, at the meeting. I usually do this by video conference or by phone calls to individual employees where, um, you know, if we can't necessarily get everybody on the same call or it's gonna to be too difficult, I will say, give me a list of employees that I can call and a good time to call them. And I'll call them and ask them questions. It usually takes about five minutes. It's not a long phone call and it's not a quiz. Um, so it's basically just a conversation that I want to find out, you know, how they feel about the programs and how they're actually working. Again, we may do an in-person site visit if we're having trouble getting information. Um, you know, we used to do this and we lost the staff to do it. So um, we are hoping to get back out in the field and continue doing in-person face-to-face conversations. But um, for now we're doing the video meetings. 
But if I have to, I will go out wherever I need to go to, um, you know, get a clearer response if needed. And then I complete my report, which we use in the determination. When you're approved, you'll get an approval letter and a certificate for each program. Um, so the letter will list all of the programs you're approved for, along with your certification numbers. Um, it will list due dates for annual reports and your renewals, and um, it will be sent to you, your insurance carrier, and the specialist. I will also mail a copy of the letter to the insurance carrier, and we also send them to the Department of Financial Services, who is responsible for monitoring um, you know, how many employers and which employers are involved in the program every year. Every year, an annual report is required, which is basic information about your programs um, and how they're performing each year. And then at the end of the three-year period, we can you can choose to renew your, your, your approval. Um, it has to be submitted at least 90 days prior to your policy renewal date. And that's at the end of the third year. So we send out reminders also about 30 days ahead of time for your annual reports and your renewals. The annual reports in a little bit more depth, um, they're due within 90 days after your policy renews in the second and third years. So in years two and three, you're going to be submitting them um, 90 days after your policy renews. And then six months later in the third year, you'll be submitting your renewal. So it's a little bit wonky with the dates, um, but it's, you know, we, for the first two annual reports, we want to see the entirety of the previous policy year's information. And for the renewal, we're looking for the first six to eight months of the current policy um, for that loss information. So it's, um, it can get a little confusing. So if you're ever confused on what dates we're looking at, what information we need, please feel free to reach out. Um, we ask for loss information for, mm -hmm. again, the just completed policy year. We wanna know about any improvements you made to your programs. If you have implemented any additional safety measures, um, any equipment that you bought over the last year, um, any investments in training and how your programs are working. Um, they're very basic information, and it's all information that you should be keeping track of as part of these programs anyway. Um, <clears throat> again, I send a reminder about 30 days before they're due. However, it is ultimately the employer's responsibility to make sure that they get submitted. Um, we do have some employers where we've had to revoke them because they did not submit an annual report and were not communicating with us. Um, we're pretty lenient. I will I will give employers a lot of extra time to submit an annual report as long as you keep communicating with me. So um, just make sure that you're responsive and you're talking and you know giving us information and letting us know when to expect things. Um, but if you're not communicating with us, we will take the credits away. So again, communication is key and we are always here to help if you have any questions or need assistance with the forms. For the renewals, again, your applications do at least 90 days before your policy renews. This is gonna take the first six to eight months of the policy year. We wanna see how your pop, how your programs are doing for the current policy year. And um, you know if we're gonna continue the programs for another three years. So you'll submit a renewal application form along with an annual report for each program. Um, so it's essentially like the initial application, you're gonna send a new application but then you're just gonna send us annual reports. You don't have to go through the whole initial application process again. You don't have to submit um, evaluation reports, nothing like that. We just wanna see the annual reports. Um, if you have revised your program documents, we wanna see those. And for the safety program, we also request updated copies of your inspections, your accident investigations. Um, we wanna see that your safety committee is still meeting and effective. Um, you know, if you have completed job hazard analyses and your OSHA forms. Um, so all of this will be requested with your, with your renewals. You don't need to send that for your annual reports. And then if we approve, you'll get a new letter and certificates, and it will be exactly the same as the last three years. Um, 
at a, at a second renewal, we will do another site site visit or verification meeting just to make sure that employees are still aware of the programs, that they're still being trained, that they're still effective. Um, we may visit more frequently if we have any concerns. Um, we do have that ability. The regulation allows us to revoke or monitor or follow up on any of the programs at any time. Um, so far, we have not had to do this. So, um, you know, as long as people are communicating and we're getting the information that we need and we're sure that your programs are working, it's going to be totally fine. For applications that are not approved, um, you know, we don't deny any applications. We don't send a lot of um, recommendations letters. We are pretty um, focused on getting everybody through the process. So um, this is this is probably a long shot, but just in case, you know, we're these are reasons that you may not be approved. If we go on site and we see physical hazards, um, we'll send you a recommendations letter. If there's evidence that the programs are not implemented or effective, so like those paper programs where employees had no idea what the what the programs were, they had no idea what I was talking about, couldn't answer any questions, that's a reason for a recommendations letter. Um, if you're missing any of the OSHA or New York State required programs, like safe patient handling, bloodborne pathogens, um, lockout, tagout, respiratory protection, if you're missing any of those, we will make a recommendation that you need to implement that. Um, we do send that letter to the employer, to the insurance carrier, and the specialist, and then we mail the originals to the employer and the carrier. <clears throat> we would love to have you make those corrections and submit them before your policy renews. Um, if you don't have time for that, submit it as soon as you can or um, submit it for the next policy year and we will be happy to go from there. Um, we do, again, really want you to continue through this process. So, um, so far, I, like Scott said, I don't think there have been any LAM participants that we've had to do this with, but just so that you're aware, these are the things that we're looking for. We have had to revoke credits in the past. Unfortunately, um, they can be revoked if um, you don't submit an annual report and you're not talking to me about it and I can't get in contact and nobody's sending anything. Um, if you have, if your experience rating hits 1.3 or goes above it in any approval year, we have to revoke the credits. Unfortunately, you would not qualify at that point. Um, so you would have to reapply once the um, experience rating is under 1.3 for at least one year. Um, if your rating is calculated at 1.3, um, but it's an error, um, once it's revised below 1.3, we will reinstate the credit. And we have had that happen before where um, incorrect loss data was submitted to the rating board um, who calculates the ratings. And um, once it was revised, we were able to reinstate that credit and get the employer participating again. Um, also, if we determine that your program is not no longer implemented or effective, um, or if the program has been revised to not meet the requirements of the Workplace Safety and Loss Prevention Program. So if you take out any of the elements in your program that are required as part of our um, part of our program, like, for example, if you take out. Um, if you had a safety committee. And that was the only way that your employees were actively involved in the programs and you get rid of the safety committee, that's going to be a reason for um, revoking the credits. <clears throat> we'll mail the revocation letter um, to the employer, the carrier, and the Department of Financial Services. Uh, the credit would be removed from the policy effective the date noted in the letter. And we do encourage you to reapply when you qualify again. So once you once you meet that under 1.3 for at least a year, we would love to have you back. Um, if it was, if your credits were revoked because you didn't submit an annual report and weren't talking to us, reapply the next the next policy year and we would be happy to work with you again. Um, communication is key. We really just wanna keep you involved. We wanna keep your employees safe. Um, are there any, I guess this is time for question and answer. So if there's any questions, please feel free to ask.
to Megan. Chris Stelmap um, earlier had a question uh, for you. Is there a workers' comp deductible threshold for an employer to be considered self-insured? Um, you can have a workers' comp deductible if you're self if you have that self insurance, but it would only count the credits would only count towards your private insurance policy. So um, we would only we would only be interested in the private insurance policy information. Um, it wouldn't apply to anything to do with your with your private insurance. Thank you. This was a great overview. Thank you so much, Megan, um, for the details. Um, many on the call may be wondering, you know, really as far as actionable items, um, what next? Where do I start um, to continue to pursue um, the Code Rule 60 opportunity? And what this just highlights really um, this role and involvement in, in the Code Rule 60 process is twofold. You know, one, as uh, risk consultants on behalf of the insurance broker, we're here to provide education on the program in partnership with the DOL, uh, but also to work with our clients on really understanding uh, the time frames and the eligibility, eligibility meaning the experience modification rating factor that you had highlighted earlier. You know, where is our current XMOD? Is it under 1.3? Is it slightly over? You know, understanding the time frame in terms of when is the earliest um, possible opportunity I, I can apply should I become eligible. Um, Jamie, myself, Chris, um, we're here and available to help um, our insureds really understand the time frame. And then to go a step further, you know, really um, providing information in terms of the DOL's criteria in terms of safety program return to work drug alcohol. Um, DOL has great information and sample programs what is included within there is a checklist on pages two and three that we routinely use as benchmarking when we consult with our insurance on a program relative to the DOL's requirements. You know, it's an opportunity to go through the pro, uh, insurance programs and check off. Um, yes, we have uh, overall accountability and goals communicated. Yes, we do training for supervisors, managers, employees, and communicate and so on and so forth. And, you know, really provides that benchmarking in terms of where are the gaps. And then LAM is able to provide some resources and guidance to close those gaps to become eligible. The second half of our role um, is our, our as certified specialists. Uh, the three of us are certified. Um, to further evaluate and explain via the reports to the Department of Labor, to the insurance carrier, how each employer meets each of their program elements. And we offer this service at no cost. Our, our clients are nonprofit and human service organizations. We would not want diminished savings as a result of applying for this opportunity. So um, that is... Um, in an opportunity to to work directly um, with us uh, as certified specialists uh, through the program. So uh, there's a lot of process information there. I would encourage our clients to lean on us to guide you through in terms of the applications, where they go, when they need to go, the renewal process, so on and so forth. So, you know, we're here to help educate, we're help to evaluate, and we're help to um, help ensure a seamless um, transition while at the same time helping our insureds maintain safety and a sound culture within each of their organizations. So as far as takeaways, I would encourage any interested employers to really reach out to Jamie, Chris, or myself, and we'd be happy to consult with you on each of the next steps. Real quick, we did have a question uh, come in is uh, what percentage can you save if you meet all the code 59 requirements? Um, I, so code rule 59 is the mandatory program and there are no percentages for saving for that. It is um, a penalty program. Um, but for code rule 60, I, I, if that's what the attendee meant, um, Again, it's up to 10% in the first year if you implement all three programs. Um, if you implement just one or two, um, it varies. The safety is, is worth 4% in the first year and return to work is also worth four in the first year. Um, and then the drug and alcohol prevention is worth 2%. So um, up to 
in the first year and then up to 6% in each of the following years. Um, and then which policy does the 10% fall under? I think you kind of answered this already, Megan, um, but which policy does the 10% fall under or belong to? Um, it's your your private New York insurance policy. So if you have, um, you know, private insurance through any insurance market in the state, except for, you know, self-insurance through the workers' comp board, um, that's the policy that would that it would apply for. It applies to your New York premium. Um, <clears throat> and if you as long as you put it, we 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 would excuse me, we review applications per policy. So if you have more than one policy, um, include all of those with the application. Any other questions, comments? Obviously, if anything comes up after this session, feel free to reach out to one of us. We're more than happy to provide additional information if needed. Absolutely, Jamie. And I think what we will do is also provide um, for further information, the code rule 60 fact sheet from the Department of Labor as many common questions, um, you know, through that uh, bulletin, as well as the sample reports and programs that are available through the Department of Labor's website. It references the checklist that we mentioned, in addition to further um, guidance in terms of the criteria and eligibility. So we will follow up via email to the attendee list uh, following this, this webinar. And please feel free to reach out to us at the DOL too if you have any questions, if you're confused about anything, if you just need help, we're happy to help. Thank you so much for having me today. I had a good time talking about the program. Megan, thank you for your time. We appreciate it speaking with our clients. Mm -hmm.